Hello and welcome to Bay College's lecture videos for Math 085. This is section 2.6, part 2. Uh, we're dividing with fractions. The first thing we're going to look at is evaluate x, y, or x times y, if x equals 2 fifths and y equals 5 thirds. So essentially, to evaluate, I'm going to replace this x value and this y value with the given values. If x is 2 fifths and y is 5 thirds, and if we recall parentheses, tell us to multiply in this case. And I can see I can reduce. There's a 5 on top and a 5 on the bottom, and any number divided by itself is 1. And since that reduces to 1, 1 times 2 is just 2, and 1 times 3 is just 3. So when we multiply across, we get 2 thirds. And that's how we would evaluate using fractions. What if we are asked to evaluate x divided by y? So this one was multiplication. Now this one is division. We're going to do the same thing. We have x divided by a y. And we're asked to evaluate for these same values. 2 fifths divided by 5 thirds. Now, to divide fractions, if we recall, we have to find the uh, reciprocal of our divisor. So I'm going to rewrite this as 2 fifths times the reciprocal of 5 thirds is 3 fifths. And we can see here nothing's going to cancel. 2 and 5 have no common. Uh, factors, and 3 and 5 have no common factors. So we're just going to multiply across. 2 times 3 is 6. 5 times 5 is 25. So we get 6 25ths. All right, we're going to move over to this board here. <coughs> Excuse me. It says, is 3 fifths a solution to 5x equals 1 third? Now, this is an equation, not an expression. So what we have to do is the same thing, essentially, is evaluate. So I have 5 times some number is equal to 1 third. <clears throat> For the value here, I'm going to put in the given information. Because we want to know, does 3 fifths make this a true statement? So I put in 3 fifths. And now I can think of this 5 as being 5 over 1. So the, we have 5 over 5, so that can reduce. So we get 3 over 1, which is just 3. And we see 3 is not equal to 1 third. These are actually reciprocals. They're not equal to each other. So this is not a true statement. So is 3 fifths a solution? No, 3 fifths is not a solution. All right, so let's go over to this question here. And it is somewhat conceptual. It asks us, a box of candies has 60 pieces. This is 2 thirds of the maximum of candy the box can hold. So if we read it again, what's the given information? Well, we currently have 60 candies. And we're told that that's only 2 thirds of the maximum. And if we explore the maximum, the most it could hold. So 60 is only 2 thirds of what it can hold. So if we look at this, let's, these are conceptual questions. It says, is the maximum more or less than 60? Well, if 60 is 2 thirds and 2 thirds is not quite 1, then <clears throat> the box can actually hold more than 60. So our answer is the maximum is more than 60, because 60 is only 2 thirds of the whole box. Let's look at this question here, b. It says, if you multiply 2 thirds times 60, would the product be more or less than 60? Well, as we had just uh, explored, 2 thirds is a value less than 1. If I multiply a value less than 1 times 60, I'm going to get a smaller value. So would the product be more or less? It would be less. And finally, now we're ready to answer the question. It says, what is the maximum candies the box can hold? Well, if we think about what we're told, 2 thirds is only 60 candies. Well, 2 thirds of what? 
well, that maximum we're looking for. So 2 thirds of the maximum is 60. Well, of tells us to multiply. And I'm going to use x as my variable because I don't know what the maximum number is. So 2 thirds of x equals 60 is our equation. So how do we go about solving this? Well, we have to divide. If you recall, when we had questions such as 3x equals 60, to isolate the variable, we would divide both sides by 3. Well, here we're going to divide both sides by a fraction. In order to divide by a fraction, we have to multiply by its reciprocal. So if I multiply by the reciprocal of 2 thirds, which we can identify as 3 halves, and if you recall in the previous uh, video, when we multiply a value by its reciprocal, we get 1. 1 is always the product of the reciprocals being multiplied. But what I do to one side of an equation, I have to do to the other. So I have 3 halves times 2 thirds x equals 60 times 3 halves. So I multiply both sides of the equation by 3 halves. Well, this 3 on top can cancel the 3 on the bottom. This 2 on top can cancel the 2 on the bottom. So I'm left with 1 over 1, which is just 1. I have 1x. And I'm going to write it right here. 1x equals. And now I have 60 times 3 halves. And I can think of this 60 as being over 1. And now I can reduce 60 over 2. Well, half of 60 is 30. So that will reduce to 30. 30 times 3 is 90. So <clears throat> the maximum number of candies that the box can hold is 90. So we have 90 candies. All right, let's move on to another um, application. It says the product of two numbers is 10. And we know that product means to multiply. If one of the numbers is 4 thirteenth, what is the other number? So <clears throat> we're going to set this up uh, in a similar fashion as the last one, the product of two numbers. So I'm going to multiply two numbers. And we're told it is 10. Well, is translates to an equal sign, and we have 10. One of the numbers is 4 thirteenths. So I'm going to put in 4 thirteenths. What is the other number? So the question is, what is this missing piece that's going to make this a true statement? So I'm going to use x as my variable. And we can see this is very similar to the last question. We have 4 thirteenths x equals 10. So how do we eliminate this 4 thirteenths? Our goal is to get x all by itself. Well, I can multiply by its reciprocal to make this 1x on this side. But what I do to one side of the equation, I have to do to the other. And now we can simplify. A 13 on top will reduce the 13 on the bottom to 1. The 4 on the bottom will reduce the 4 on top to 1. So I'm left with 1x. And now we can do this. Well, I can think of this 10 as being 10 over 1. And we can reduce 10 and 4 because they both have a common factor of 2. So this would be 5 halves. And now we can multiply across the numerators. 5 times 13 is going to be 65. And 1 times 2 is 2. So we get x equals 65 halves. It's an improper fraction, but we can leave our answer in that form. The next asks us, what is the quotient of 2 18ths of 30 if it's divided by 3 18ths of 10 19ths? Well, if we look at what words we're using, we quotient says we're going to divide. And of tells us to multiply. So I have 2 18ths of 30. And here we have 3 18ths of 10 19ths. So I have 2 18ths of, and I'm going to use multiplication, 30. That's the first piece of the puzzle we have here. And the quotient, which means divided, so this is going to be divided by, and I'm going to put the rest in parentheses, 3 18ths of 
10 nineteenths. Now, before I begin, maybe I'm going to do a little assessing. And I say 2 eighteenths, that's a fraction that I can reduce. This reduces to 1 ninth. Because if we reduce our fractions, we're going to have smaller numbers to work with times 30. And I'm going to think of that 30 over 1 divided by, we have 3 18 And I say, hey, that reduces because 3 and 18 both have a common factor of 3. So this is going to be 1 6 times 10 over 19. That does not reduce because 19 is a prime number. So now, if we look at this, we can do some reducing, or well, some uh, cross-reducing here. I say 9 and 30 have a common factor of 3. So this would be 10, and this would be 3. And if I multiply these, I have 10 over 3. Let me just go over here where I have a little bit more room. 10 over 3 is divided by, we have 1 6 times 10 19 Well, I can see that 6 and 10 have a common factor. So I'm going to write that as 3. And this is 5. I just take out that factor of 2. And now I have 5 times 1 is 5. And 3 times 19 is going to be, uh, let's see, 30, 57. OK. And now, because it's division, I have to multiply by the reciprocal of the divisor. So I have 10 thirds times 57 fifths. And what we can see here is 10 and 5. Well, I see that common factor of 5. So I can reduce this to 1 and that to 2. And now I can multiply. 2 times 57 is 114 over 3. Now, maybe there's something more I can reduce. Maybe there was something back here I could reduce, but I missed it. And I can look at this and say, well, is this divisible by 3? Well, one of our tests for divisibility that we've seen in a previous section is if this sums to something divisible by 3, then it is divisible by 3. So we're going to say 4, 5, 6. This would sum to 6 in its digits. Well, 6 divided by 3 is divisible, which means 114 is divisible. Let's uh, refresh ourselves with long division and do this division here. 3 goes into 11 3 times, which would be 9. And then I find the difference. 11 minus 9 is 2, and I bring down the 4. 3 goes into 24 8 times, which would be 24. I find the difference. There is no remainder. So our final answer is 38. So <clears throat> this has been section 2.6, part 2. Thank you for watching.